Welcome back to STC. Today we want to talk about Scarbosis criteria and we're going to talk about it with the Smith's modification, okay? This is a modification which has made Scarbosis criteria much more sensitive and specific to the actual findings of the MI. What is Scarbosis criteria? It's a simple set of rules. It's, it's three findings you can detect in the presence of a left bumble branch block or a paced rhythm which will allow you to identify a transmural MI or what is usually called a STEMI. It just can't be called a STEMI when it's in the presence of one of these <clears throat> wide complex rhythms because it's not the same thing, right? Which is why I like to refer to things as a transmural MI. If you don't know what a transmural MI is, um, take, a, take a second and watch the transmural MI video. It's pretty simple. So why do we even need this? Why does it matter? It's because these rhythms possess common morphologies which have been known to mimic ST segment elevation. Now, new onset left bundle branch block used to be criteria to go to the cath lab. It used to be criteria to alert the cath lab and have everybody waiting for you. But what we found is about 15% of those new onset left bundle branch blocks were actually due to an MI right there at that point in time. So we developed these, uh, this list of things called imposters for STEMIs, which uh, prevent us from calling out transmural MIs when we see them. But Scarbosis criteria solves that problem. So what are those criteria? Three simple criteria, okay? The first criteria is ST elevation greater than one millimeter in any lead, all right? So concordant ST elevation, as you see in the lower left-hand corner. The next criteria in the lower right-hand corner is ST depression, which is concordant greater than one millimeter in V1, V2, or V3 only, okay? V1, V2, or V3. <clears throat> and these don't necessarily have to follow in the whole contiguous leads pattern like other STEMIs have, uh, or like regular STEMIs do. Criteria C used to be five millimeters or greater. What we know now is we need to measure the STS ratio, which is denoted by the uh, the little lines that look like you would cut with a pair of scissors on here. And what that, that height of that section needs to be 25% of the QRS complex height or greater in order to be considered positive for scarbosis criteria. Okay, so what is concordant and discordant? This is what I get asked the most. All right, the answer is concordant is moving the same way and discordant is moving the opposite way. All right, so same or opposite of what? The QRS complex, of course. All right, so let's have a look at this and see if we can identify scarbosis criteria, okay? So what we see here, if you look at V1, V2, and V3, we have concordant ST segment depression. So if you were to flip this up, if this were a mirror image, it would be a STEMI. And uh, this is sometimes a pretty good indication there's a posterior wall MI here, okay? Um, doesn't necessarily have to be posterior, but it is definitely a positive finding. It is positive for scarbosis criteria. And anytime you see this in conjunction with the signs and symptoms of an MI, you're probably looking at a transmural MI. All right, let's have a look at another one here. This one's a lot more subtle, but you can see the ST elevation, the concordant ST elevation in AVL, right? And it hits that millimeter. It's uh, not quite as prevalent or as large or as giant as we like to see whenever we're calling to alert the cath lab, but this is an actual transmural MI. So get out there and do some practice. Like the video. Uh, tell me what you want to learn in the comments below. Thanks, guys.